thank you for joining me for today's episode of the Seatown Podcast, where I bring you Seattle area business owners, entrepreneurs, and community personalities. Uh, today's guest is a friend of mine whom I've known for uh, quite some time. She owns a number of uh, salons around Seattle. So here's Jennifer Sawyer, owner of Pin Up Salons in West Seattle and Ravenna. So you can just tell me a little bit about what, what you do. Uh, well, I own a few salons. Um, uh, here in Seattle, I own two salons called Pin Up Salon. Um, I also just actually uh, bought another salon in Michigan a year ago uh, that's uh, called the Original Pin Up. So I'm very busy traveling uh, across the country about every month or so. Um, but I've been here in Seattle for about a little over 10 years. Um, and I've had uh, the West Seattle location for that amount of time. And then uh, I have another salon up in Ravenna, so North Seattle, for the past, like, six years. So, Okay. Yeah. Neat. What uh, What got you into to doing hair? Why did you start, um, start doing that? I actually, um, so I had been in corporate life for a decade, um, but kind of when I first, very first got my first real job out of college, I was very successful. I was loving what I was doing. I was actually in commercial real estate, oddly enough. Mm -hmm. Um uh, and I was really loving it, but I had met this hairdresser. She was phenomenal. She was like 20 years old, about the same age as me at the time. And she just was like owning it, doing her thing, opened her own, you know, shop and just was thriving. And I thought, gosh, this seems like such a fun job. And, you know, we just always had that little bug in my ear. Like that was something I was always interested in. And even as a teenager, I was always doing my friends hair and my hair, sure. but it wasn't a really a career path. It wasn't something I considered being an option, you know, for building a career out of. Um, and so 10 years came and went and I would always think about doing it. And then finally I just decided what did I have to lose? And I, uh, quit my job, went to beauty school and just started a fresh life. And I figured, you know, if it, if it all flopped, I could always go back to corporate. It's not like they were going to shut the door on me. So sure. I figured it was worth taking the risk because it was something I was always kind of interested in. Okay. So did it start off with you just wanting to do hair or were you more in like the business side of things? And I definitely had an entrepreneur spirit long before doing hair. I mean, even all the years that I worked in corporate, I was always taking on more work and, you know, working outside my job description and doing, you know, just kind of always curious about like the inner workings of like how a company operates and being involved in that more. Um, and I went to business school, you know, nights and got my degree in business and I had owned a couple, um, small businesses like on the side of my corporate job like I owned a custom wedding stationery company with two girlfriends for several years and we actually did really well with that as a side business um I also uh sold Tupperware for many years and that was like a pretty thriving side business that I had I did jamboree nails for a while like okay. I've kind of done a lot of things like I just have that spirit you know I sure, want to be able awesome. to take ownership of my own future and I feel like being independent is a lot of a lot of that success so I take it you're not really doing much hairstyling yourself now you I mean with three shops you're probably pretty busy running Actually, those Actually, I I still work behind the chair very okay. aggressively I still take a lot of advanced education I I'm spent at least four days of the week behind the chair okay uh, I have promoted one of my internal people to salon manager essentially so she's doing a lot of the day-to-day -day operations for me now which is allowing me to uh, take on this venture in Michigan be with my kids more you know just balancing my work-life situation sure. um, and that's working out great she's worked for me for six years and she's fabulous and it's just it's a good step up for her and it's great for me because I'm be able able to delegate more responsibility and take on other projects so um, so yeah I'm still behind the chair and I'm very passionate about that mm -hmm. I I feel like it's really a disservice a little bit to be in our type of industry and not physically be doing hair because honestly, the technology, the trends are so ever changing mm -hmm. that if you're somebody that did hair 20 years ago and now you just own the salon, it's hard for you to really be setting the tone for what you expect of your staff if you're not like showing, leading by example, I guess. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I, that I, for me personally, that's very important to me to sure. lead by example. Yeah. And it seems like, uh, you know, I mean, I'm a pretty simple guy. I usually just go to, you know, a, a barber shop. You know, I don't get my hair yeah. styled. But uh, it seems like, yeah. you know, what you got going on with the pinup salon is very, uh, very, very intentional. You know, there's a lot of yeah. style to it. Yes. And, and, you know, kind of what, I don't know if you could speak to kind of the internal culture and kind of how the, like if each shop kind of has its own flavor or if there's kind of a uniformity across them, you know. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that's really great, I think, about what we have is that despite being across town from each other and despite having entirely different stylists, different staff, 
you're going to get the same consistency of focus on client service, focus on individualized attention, listening, you know, catering to what the client needs are Mm -hmm. from each and every person on staff, even though like everyone's personalities are vastly different. We all have the same commitment to prioritizing our clients first and foremost, and then second to education and, and advanced training and making sure that we are actually delivering what is new and current and relevant to what clients are asking for. And, you know, we, we definitely are trendsetters in the industry, even though we're a very small salon, we were way ahead of the curve with the pinup hair, which is becoming crazy popular. Now we were way ahead of the curve with Pravana Vivid's rainbow colors, which of course is everywhere now. I mean, we were doing, you know, Vivid's rainbow colors before any Hollywood stars had lavender hair. Like this is, because we are definitely always keeping like cutting edge with what is new and upcoming yeah. and we bring it in and we, and we test it and we play with it and we get some of our clients to like volunteer to be models and try yeah. new things and we try them ourselves. So I think the culture of pinup salon is essentially having roots in what is classic, vintage, beautiful, sexy, classy, and also bringing in that spice, that edge sure. that is new and trendy. Sure. So it's like you could be, I mean, we have clients that are in their nineties and we have clients that are 15 year olds that want teal, you know, punk rock hair. I mean, we have everything in between, you know, we service men, women, kids, like there's no one that we don't feel confident and comfortable mm-hmm. taking care of. And that's really for us. I think what we're all really excited and passionate about is that we can serve anyone in our community and we have open doors for everyone in our community. Yeah. That's cool. What, um, I guess, how is there like kind of a process to, you know, staying ahead of the curve and, and trendy? I mean, obviously being in Seattle and kind of urban center, it's, it, it's probably a little more yeah, natural. Yeah, but Obviously, Seattle is a pretty like, you know, trend setting place. But, um, you know, one of the things I'm really um, proud of with my staff, and this is through no push from me as their leader is they all like follow Instagram of, you know, the stylists that are really on the cutting edge and that really are all that kind of setting a lot of trends and experimenting and, go, you know, thinking outside of the box in terms of what's possible with hair. A lot of my staff like follow Instagram, they do YouTube and they're just like learn about things and then they'll bring it, you know, we'll have a team meeting and they'll be like, Oh, I saw this really cool thing. And they'll share a video. And then we start talking about, well, maybe we should experiment with that or they'll hear about a new treatment or a new, you know, like Olaplex is like a huge thing right now that's helping with people that color their hair, not break off their hair. You know, it's like a protection. It's a brand new technology. It's never existed before. And we brought it in like right away knowing that, Hey, this is something that's going to be really vital to our clients to help keep the integrity of their hair. So I, I think it's really a team effort. I mean, the six of us here in Seattle, like we've all worked together for a minimum, like the shortest staff person has been on staff for, I think three years and then up to 10 years. So like we've all, we have a real synergy now, which is so great. A lot of salons can't say that, that they've had the the same staff. And I see us having the same staff, honestly, 10 years from now. Like we just have a great family of, you know, of stylists now where we get to all bring something to the table, which is really awesome. Yeah. So. Well, speaking of the staff being kind of an integral part of that, that culture and, and the drive of the direction, you know, how do you determine, you know, who, who to hire? It sounds like there's some longevity there you know how yeah, do you decide I, who to bring on board yeah i've always approached um hiring from definitely like the long-term gain i'm not i'm not so much concerned with like what is somebody bringing in when they walk in the door it's more an energy like is this person really going to be able to focus on the clients in the way that pinup has been ha, you know we formed a reputation in the community for being very client focused and very good listeners and very tailored. And so I think the thing I've noticed of the people that I have hired that haven't worked out is they maybe have been a lot more like thinking here and now versus like thinking long term. And for us, it's about really building the relationship long term with our clients. Like we, of course, want you to come in and have a great service and leave happy like in your one visit. But it's also about like talking about you know, we, we have this great questionnaire that we do, and, and I don't know anyone else in the business that does this. And I literally wrote it when I was in beauty school, and I've used it unaltered pretty much from that day. And one of the questions we ask our clients the first day we meet them is, if you could have the hair of your dream, dreams, what would that look like? Mm-hmm. That opens the door for people to really be thinking, what do I really want my hair to say about me? Because as much as people in Seattle 
you know, and I'm not from Seattle. And I was gonna, like laugh about people yeah. in Seattle talking about how, oh, I don't care about my hair. Like I just go wherever. I don't yeah. really care. And I always say, well, let's just shave your head. Let's just get the clippers out right now and sure. shave your head. They care because then. I, guarantee yeah. you, I guarantee you that you care enough about your hair that you're not going to let me just shave it off right now. Yeah. So even if like you care very little, you care enough to put some amount of effort or you would either never get a haircut or you would just shave your head every day. Yeah. Right. Like there's even if you do, you want low maintenance, which we respect, we honor that. Mm -hmm there's still a way to have low maintenance hair and also feel and look your best. Sure. And that's what we want to achieve for our clients. And that's why we ask them, you know, if you could have the hair of your dreams, what does that look like for you? Yeah. I bet there's a way we can get there. Yeah. And it may not be today, but in the long haul, we want to give that to them. We want yeah. them to feel fabulous every single day when they wake up. Sure. That sounds like a great approach to kind of get past those, uh, probably unseen barriers that, uh, people like to put up of, you know, I don't care what I look like. I, you know, I don't care what other people think. I mean, in reality, we all do in our own way. So that's, that's pretty, exactly. That's and neat. even if we don't, even if we want low maintenance, I mean, I honestly, you know, I have this like half shaved thing and you know, I'm styling and all that, but mm -hmm. you have no idea. Like this takes like a minute and a half. That's why I have this haircut because yeah. you know, I don't, I don't want to put a lot of effort into my hair any much, any more than the next person, mm -hmm. but I also want to look good and I want to feel good. And sure. that's, you know, where, some people are, are happy to spend an hour on their hair and great. And some people aren't. And I don't, we don't ever want anyone to feel like we're not the right fit for them because we don't expect everybody to like go all out with a curling iron. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we'll give you the tools if you want to use them. And we'll also help you if you want the wash and wear. Like, we, we just are about really catering. Like, what does your lifestyle involve and what works for you in your lifestyle? That's what we want to, that's what we want to provide for yeah. our clients, you know? And like I said, we've got, you know, 90 year olds, we've got working moms, we've got, you know, stay at home moms with four kids. I mean, a lot of our clients don't have time, you yeah. know what I mean? Or, or they don't have desire or energy. So we have to, you know, we have to be, um, I guess, responsible to that. Sure. When, um, when a new client walks in the door, what, uh, what do you think their experience is? What are they feeling? You know, what, what's that kind of culture you're going for? Uh, the, the flavor of, you know, the, the salon. One of the things that I, we get comments on at almost every time somebody new comes into our salon and I, and I really love it. It's actually like what I was thriving or sorry, striving for, mm -hmm. um, is people are like, Oh, this is so cute and tiny, right? Like we have this little, I mean, our West Seattle salon is like all of maybe 350 square feet. Mm -hmm. It is very small. Um, but it's got this intimacy to it. And both salons I think have this where you just feel like you can walk in the door, kick your shoes off. I mean, not li literally, right. But sure. like, you know, if you wanted to, sure, whatever, you know, kick your shoes off, have a glass of wine, relax and just sink into the chair and just know you're at home mm -hmm. and that you're going to be taken care of the whole time that you're there. And whether it's, you know, just getting that couple hours for yourself to get away from all the stress of the world or, you know, you just love leaving this lawn feeling fabulous. Like I just, I really enjoy that people walk in and feel at home. They feel comfortable. They feel safe. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we have a lot of clients that get extensions that have thinning hair and the intimacy and privacy of our salon allows people that are going through that kind of traumatic experience of experiencing hair loss, for example, or, or even, you know, just, um, people getting their hair colored. Some people are very private about, not wanting to be out on display that, oh yeah, I have gray hair at 20, you know, nine and mm -hmm. I have to cover my, you know, not everybody wants to be out with their business. Yeah. So I think it's nice to have the, the type of environment where there is an intimacy and a privacy and a security. You know, we have transgender clients that are very nervous, you know, as they're transitioning mm -hmm. to go to a big salon, which that is kind of a nerve wracking thing because it's an emotional, you know, so it's, I guess I feel really good that we can service, like I said, anyone and make them feel comfortable, make them feel at home. That's what I think the essential vibe of pinup is. Sure. Sure. Well, it's being a, a business owner. What's your, your favorite aspect of, of what you do? Um, I think the transformation, just that, you know, seeing, seeing literally a person like get out of the chair and just be lit up with mm -hmm. excitement at how they look and feel. It's, it's something that's so small, the person feeling good emits such good energy into the world. Like they walk out into the world and then they take that with them and they share that with other people. And I just, I really believe in, I guess what you put out is what you receive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I like that I get to like be part of putting out good. Sure. That that's my favorite thing. Sure. It, would you say there's a like a most popular you know product or service that you guys provide, or is it kind of across the board? 
It's um, it's pretty diverse. I mean, honestly, I would say that we're definitely known for like you know the rainbow colors. Like that's something that people come to us uh, special, you know, especially for. Uh, we also specialize in extensions. Um, I think the cool thing about us is that we are a truly full service salon. Like mm -hmm. there isn't any type of hair that we don't work on. There isn't any type of service that we don't provide. We do everything from, from old school perms, which very few salons offer anymore. Sure to rainbow colors, to classic, you know, um, African-American style, like relaxing of hair, mm -hmm. uh, blowouts, pinup styles. You know, I mean, there's, there's nobody that can't come into our salon. So I think that's unique about us, I guess, that we really are truly full service. Okay. So is that, uh, I mean, obviously I don't know that, know that much about, about the industry. Is that maybe one of the distinguishing traits that, that kind of separates you guys from other uh, salons in the area or? I think so. I think that um, it's interesting. It, where I'm from in the Midwest, it's not as much, but a lot of salons here like kind of have people that they force to specialize. So like there's a person you see for haircutting. There's a person, a different person you see for coloring, a different person that might specialize in texture. We do to an extent, each of the stylists kind of has like, I guess what their passion is like Shayla loves texture service. Lindsay mm -hmm. loves blondes and extensions, you know, um, Molly and I both love balayage. So we do have our things that we're passionate about, mm -hmm. but not to the point that we're limiting ourselves from also excelling in other areas. So I do think that that sets us apart. I don't think that you find many salons where you can walk in and get any type of service done to your hair that's possible, possible to have done mm -hmm. by someone who is actually expertly trained in that service. Like, I think that is actually rare to find. Sure. So I know that you, uh, like the website Ian talks about, you got your West Seattle store and then your Ravenna store. Yeah. Um, did the yeah. West Seattle one come first and how long after that yeah. one? Uh, yeah, West Ravenna... Seattle was first. I was um, actually working in a sort of uh, another small boutique salon um, on Elkai. And then I had been thinking about getting my own place and I saw the space available that I'm still in to this day mm -hmm. in West Seattle on Harper Avenue. And um I just called. It was just super random, and it had actually been an insurance office that had, like, gray, ugly carpet and gray walls and yeah. fluorescent lights. But I just was like, I think I can make something out of this. And so I had a one-chair salon, and it was me and one part-time employee. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I was teaching beauty school part-time at the time, and I just built it from that, and it's just kind of grown into what it is now. Okay. Now, uh, how far after opening the, the original one did the Ravenna one open? Um, it was probably about three years. I actually, the re I was just telling some in the story yesterday. Um, the reason I opened Ravenna was because my salon in West Seattle had started out as a one chair salon. I mentioned that I taught beauty school and I had in the time that I was teaching encountered a lot of talent, but one person in particular, one of my students, um, you know, I just saw a lot of potential in and I wanted to hire her a uh, full time but at the time she was doing a lot of photo shoot work with me, like um, styling and makeup but there wasn't enough work for her to like actually make a full-time living. So I had talked to her about wanting to work for me full-time, which she was interested in, but I didn't have any place for her to work full-time. Okay. So I ended up because she lived like way in the North end of Seattle. I ended up deciding based on wanting to hire this person that I would open another salon mm -hmm. <laughs> to give her a job. That's essentially like why I opened Ravenna. Okay. Um, and it seems crazy in hindsight, but now, you know, she's been with me six years. She's, my right hand basically so mm -hmm. i mean it definitely i definitely saw talent and i knew that if i encouraged it that she would blossom and she has sure. so yeah okay of the uh, the two seattle stores is there one that kind of does you know more than the other in, in business or um i think that they they both they're both very busy mm -hmm. um they're very busy in different services and west seattle well actually we have great lengths um, certified extensions experts in both locations now because um, we did only have a person in West Seattle but now we have a person in Ravenna that does the Great Lakes extension so we probably do more of the rainbow colors in Ravenna because mm -hmm. it's near the university so there's a lot more like younger people kind of looking for that edgy trendy new stuff but no I think they're about equivalent I mean business wise like they're both really strong and, and the stylists are all very busy so well it's great I mean it sounds like the, the business is going well here in Seattle um, yeah, yeah. Th I mean, thanks for kind of sharing, you know, part of your story, um, you know, yeah, business wise. Um, is there anything yeah, you want to share? You know, like more on the, the personal side of things. You know, like what what you like to do in your free time, or uh, you know, other other passions um, you may have. Well, I definitely. I spot. wish I had. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I wish. You know, I have two small kids. I have yeah. a, a almost five year old and a one and a half year old 
son and daughter and I, um, I love my kids so much. I wish I had more time with them. You know what I mean? It's just so hard. I, I would not trade what I have for anything. I love my business. I love my staff. I feel, I feel like my staff are like children to me. You know, it's mm -hmm. like I've groomed them and lifted them up and they're thriving. And I love that. I love that I can support people making a good living and like enjoying their life and having all the work-life balance that they deserve, you know, cause they do work hard and they do great work. Mm -hmm. Um, it just, it's always hard. I mean, I think for any working parent, not just mother, but any working parent, it's always hard to balance the time that's important to have with your family and the passion that you have for your career. Yeah, and definitely. You know, I think it would be just so nice to be able to freeze frame moments of, of life and just say, I just want to just savor this, but yeah. it's just not how it works. And my mother was um, a really hard worker the same way I am. I definitely, you know, I definitely inherited my work ethic from my parents sure. and that Midwestern upbringing. Yep. So I, I think what the gift that I, I always try to think of when I'm feeling guilty, right, about working as much as I do, um, I always try to think, you know, the gift that I'm giving my children is teaching them that they can have anything that they set their mind to mm -hmm. with enough hard work and commitment. Sure. And they know I love them. And I do actually get a lot more time with my children than probably most working parents because I do set my schedule and a lot of my hours are when my kids are sleeping and things mm -hmm. like that. So I don't know, I guess, you know, personally, I'd love to travel more. I'd love to like have more vacations and more free time. But, you know, entrepreneurship is, is a 24 seven job. Yeah. So, I, I went into that with open eyes and here I am 10 years later and I wouldn't trade it. Yeah. I wouldn't trade it. That's yeah. great. It's great to hear that things are going yeah. so well for you. You know, we yeah. haven't uh, talked in a while, but uh, I'm glad you know, agreed yeah. to come on the podcast. It's been awesome. Um, if someone wants yeah. to check out your salon, what, what's the best way to do it? Just like website and schedule um, an appointment? Just or? go to the website. Yeah, it's just www.pinupsalon.biz, B-I-Z. And um, yeah, pretty much everything about us is there. And it's great because we have online booking. So if somebody wants to check us out, we do free consultations. You know, they can just like book right online. So it's very simple, very streamlined. Sure. Great. Well, thanks for being on here today. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. It's yeah. good to chat with you. Thanks for joining me for this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, or if you're listening to the Seatown podcast on the website, that would be the icon at the top that looks like a giant halo in the back of a guy's head. Um, uh, that'll take you to the iTunes page. You can, you can subscribe from there or uh, rate and review my podcast, which would also help. If you'd like to get a hold of me or would like to be a guest on my podcast, you can contact me at christianharris at ctown.com or you can visit my website at ctown.com. c-town.com. See you next week.